In this video, we're going to talk about the Michael reaction. So the first thing we need is a Michael donor, which is typically a stabilized enolate. So let's use a base to remove the alpha hydrogen in the first step. And so here we have an enolate that is stabilized by two carbonyl groups. And then this is going to react with an alpha beta unsaturated aldehyde. Here is the alpha carbon and here is the beta carbon. Now you need to know that the beta carbon and the carbonyl carbon, they're both electrophilic. And so whenever you have a nucleophile, a nucleophile can attack at the beta carbon or at the carbonyl carbon. Weak bases tend to attack at the beta carbon. And strong bases, they tend to attack at the carbonyl carbon, giving you direct addition, whereas a weak base will give you conjugate addition. And so in order to get the micro reaction, we want this stabilized enolate or weak base to attack at the beta carbon. And so that's why it's good that the enolate is between two carbonyl groups, because weak bases prefer to attack here. Now, if you want to see why those two carbon atoms are electrophilic, here's how you can show it. So we know that the carbonyl carbon is electrophilic because if we draw this resonance structure, we can put a positive charge on the carbonyl carbon, thus proving that it's electrophilic. Now to show that the beta carbon is electrophilic as well, here's what we can do. If we draw the resonance structure for that molecule based on those arrows, we could put a positive charge on a beta carbon showing that it's electrophilic. Now let's get back to the reaction. So here we have a Michael donor. It's a stabilized enolate ion. And the Michael donor is basically a nucleophile. And it's going to react with the Michael acceptor, which in this example is the alpha beta unsaturated aldehyde. The Michael acceptor serves as an electrophile. And so the carbon with the negative charge is going to attack the beta carbon, causing these pi electrons to move to the adjacent bond, breaking that pi bond. And so now let's count the longest chain. This is carbon 1, 2, 3. Carbon 3 attacks the beta carbon, which we'll call carbon 4. And so we have a 6 carbon chain, which looks like this. On carbon 6, we have an oxygen with a negative charge, and we have a double bond between 5 and 6. Now, on carbon 3, we have these two carbons. So let's put that here. And so this is what we now have. Now, in the next step, we need to react this with a weak acid. So I'm going to use water as an example. Depending on your solvent, it could differ, so just keep that in mind. As the oxygen bears back down on the double bond, it causes the double bond to be nucleophilic, except in, actually not nucleophilic, but more basic rather, because it's except in the hydrogen. And so we're going to get this product. And so this is the product of the Michael reaction. Typically, a 1,5-dicarbonyl compound is formed after the Michael reaction. Now let's work on another example. So let's react this compound with potassium hydroxide. And then in the second step, we're going to use an alpha beta unsaturated aldehyde. And then in the third step, 
let's use uh, water. So go ahead and predict the major product for this reaction. Feel free to pause the video. So let's write up a mechanism just like before. So in the first step, we're going to use the base to remove the alpha hydrogen. generating the enolate ion. Now in the second step we are going to react that with our Michael acceptor and so the enolate will attack the beta carbon causing this to move over here breaking the pi bond. And so we're going to get this product. So we have an oxygen with a negative charge and the double bond. And also we have a methyl group on this carbon. So you have one, two, three, four carbons that we're adding. And the enolate attacked carbon two. So we got to make sure we have the right number of carbon atoms. And then in the last step, we need to add a hydrogen. And so this is the product for the Michael reaction. And the product looks like this. Once again, we have a 1,5 dicarbonyl compound as our product. Here's a question for you. Can this enolate ion serve as a Michael donor? What's going to happen if we react it with an alpha beta unsaturated aldehyde? Will it attack at the beta carbon or at the carbonyl carbon? If it attacks as a beta carbon, then that's going to lead to the Michael reaction. If it attacks at the carbonyl carbon, it's not going to lead to the Michael reaction. It turns out that this enolate ion is not a very good Michael donor. Now granted, it can participate in the Michael reaction. It could attack the beta carbon. However, it prefers to attack the carbonyl carbon because this is a relatively strong base. And so these two sites are in competition. Therefore, the yield for the Michael reaction is not good with this type of enolate ion. Whereas if you have a more stable, all right, this computer's having issues. Now, if you have a more stable enolate ion, this base is not as strong as this one. It's actually much weaker. And so this will prefer to attack at the beta carbon rather than at the carbonyl carbon. And to understand why, you can analyze the pKa of the conjugate acid. So the pKa of the alpha hydrogen of a diketone is about 9. And the pKa of acetone is around 20. And the pKa of water is 15.7. The stronger the conjugate acid, the weaker the conjugate base. The strongest acid is the one with the lowest pKa. So therefore, this is going to be the weakest conjugate base. So the strongest conjugate base is the one of the weakest acid or the highest pKa. So this enolate ion, based on the pKa values, is stronger than hydroxide. And hydroxide is a stronger base than the enolate ion that's flanked by two carbonyl groups. So we know hydroxide is considered to be a strong base. So therefore, this is definitely a strong base as well. And the enolate ion between two carbonyl groups, that's considered to be a weak base. And so this is a very good Michael donor. Now let's go back to this reaction. So right now, this is not going to give us a good yield in terms of the Michael addition reaction. 
This enolate ion will prefer to attack at the carbonyl carbon rather than at the beta carbon. So the yields will be low for the Michael addition product. However, we can increase those yields even using this enolate ion by adjusting the Michael acceptor. So basically what we need to do is make the beta carbon more accessible towards a nucleophilic attack. Whereas the carbonyl carbon, we want to add some groups to it and make it less accessible. So the first thing we could do is instead of using an aldehyde, we can use a ketone. And ketones are less reactive than aldehydes at the carbonyl group because of the CH3. So this CH3 reduces the accessibility of the nucleophile to the carbonyl group. It provides steric hindrance. And also it's an electron donating group. So it donates electron density to the carbonyl carbon, making it less electrophilic. And so by using a ketone, an alpha beta unsaturated ketone, as opposed to an aldehyde, you can increase the yield of the Michael addition reaction. So now it's easier for the nucleophile to attack at the beta carbon than at the carbonyl carbon. It could still attack here though, by the way, because this ketone is not, it's not too sterically hindered. So it can attack at both. We can get a, a mixture of products. However, we can increase the yield further if we make the ketone even less accessible. Let's say if we add, if there's a turk butyl group instead. So now it's a lot harder for the nucleophile to approach the carbonyl carbon. And so in this case, we could say that this will now be a good micro reaction. Even though we have a strong base, the best place to attack will be the beta carbon, giving us the micro addition product. So just keep this in mind. A good micro donor is a weak base. If you have a strong base, it's not a very good micro donor, but it can participate in a micro reaction if you use an alpha beta unsaturated ketone that is sterically hindered at the carbonyl site. So just keep that in mind. Now let's work on one more example. So here we have nitroethane and we're going to react it with potassium hydroxide followed by a Michael acceptor with a nitrile functional group and then the last step will be H2O. So go ahead and predict the major product for this reaction. Now the alpha hydrogen of nitroethane is relatively acidic. The pKa is about 9 as well. So therefore, this is going to be a good Michael donor. Now the first thing we need to do is we need to take off the hydrogen. And so let's use hydroxide to do that. So the nitro group looks like this. And as you can see, the carbon with the negative charge is stabilized by the nitro group we can basically put the negative charge on the oxygen if we want to. And so this base is a weak base because the negative charge is stabilized uh, by this oxygen atom. So now that we have a good Michael donor, let's react it with the Michael acceptor. So the carbon with the negative charge will attack the beta carbon, pushing the pi electrons here, causing this pi bond to break. Let's call this carbon 1, carbon 2, which connects to carbon 3, and this is 4 and 5. So this is carbon 3, 4, and then 5 is the carbon atom, which now has a double bond. And the nitrogen atom has two lone pairs and a negative charge. And we also have another double bond here, which I think I need to redraw it better. Now the last step is to react it with water. So this lone pair is going to reform the nitrile group, 
causing this pi bond to break, except in the hydrogen from water. And so now we have our final product. So we have a total of five carbons. This is three, four, and then the fifth carbon is part of the nitrile group. And then attached to carbon two, we have the nitro group. And so this is the major product of the Michael reaction.